Hello and welcome to this Trade Radiators video. My name is James and today we're going to go through the very simple procedure of removing a radiator from the wall without actually having to drain it down. It's a nice little trick to do, but be aware that when you do remove the radiator it will be a lot heavier because it's got water in it. The reason you might want to do this is obviously you want to do some work behind the wall, like take off some old wallpaper or plaster it or do some painting or anything like that, so it's nice and handy to know. Also, it means you don't have to drain down the whole heating system. So follow these very simple steps and it should show you easily how to do this job. I hope you enjoy the video and let's go. You may recognize this radiator from one of the other videos we did on how to hang a radiator. This is the Deco radiator that is available on the website. So the first thing we're gonna do is shut the TRV or the lock shield at both ends. So we're gonna shut this one down now. I'm just going to pop down the other end and shut the lock shield off. Sometimes you'll need an adjustable spanner to shut the lock shield. Now that we've shut the valves off, we need to make sure that the valves are actually holding so that when we remove the radiator from the wall, no water comes flying out of the valves. The way we do that is we open up the bleed key at the top of the radiator here and just dissipate the pressure and watch to make sure that there's no more drips coming out. That can take a few seconds and you might need a little tub as well to catch any water. And then once we've done that, it's very important that we shut the bleed key again because if that's left open and we come to remove the radiator later on, it could allow air into the top of the radiator and allow water out the bottom of it. So I cannot reiterate enough how important it is to shut this bleed key again once we move on to the next part of the job. Right, so now we know they're both holding, the best thing to do now is to just get a towel and lay it down under each part, each end of the radiator. So what we're going to do is slacken off each one of these nuts, just there and there, to the point whereby you can hear the actual nut clicking because it's right at the end of its thread. Then we know that we can prise off the ends of the valves slightly, lift up the radiator and straight away flop it down so no water can come out. This is the really difficult bit, but if you watch us do this a few times, you'll get an idea of what we're trying to do, okay? So just follow us on this next bit. If you need to watch it a few more times to know what we're doing, then that's fine. We're just slackening this one off here, that's done. Good, now I'm just gonna pop down this end here. See how nice and quickly we're working here, we're going like a train. You might as well be quick. We've got a little bit of water coming out there, it should slow up. There we go, lovely. Right, now we're ready to lift the radiator. So what I'm gonna do now is just lay out this little bit of rug here, just for our top of the radiator to come down and flop onto here. Right, this is the bit you probably might wanna watch a few times. Right, now what we've done, the water now, obviously with gravity, is now going to the bottom of the rad. So what we need to do, we can just pull this one off here, undo that one up there, and we should, with any luck, just be able to pop this off. So there you go, as I said, you will get a little bit of water come out, but if you have your towels in the right place, everything should just be fine. So now we've got the radiator full up to about here with water. Uh, basically, do the work that you want to do behind the radiator and then do what we've just done there in reverse order. I recommend that if you haven't done this before, watch this video a few times and then get someone to help you because it is a nice quick way of doing it. But if you get it wrong, you could sort of get a lot of water on the carpet or have radiators fall off the wall or things like that. So definitely make sure you know what you're doing and get someone to help you if you don't feel confident. So there you go, you've seen how easy it is to whip off one of these radiators and pop another one back on. I can't help but reiterate again the importance of getting all your towels in the right place, making sure you're nicely prepared and that you've got some help as well before you carry out doing this job. Once the radiator's on the wall, if you didn't drain the radiator outside or something like that, you should just be able to nip up the two valves once you've got the radiator back on the wall, open up the bleed vent and then bleed out a very small amount of air and then if you've got a pressurized system just make sure it's set to the right pressure. If you've got an unvented system that's tank fed from the loft it should automatically fill up. As always I always say if you do any small amount of works when it comes to radiator work it's always a very good idea to maybe top the system up with some inhibitor. I hope today's video has helped you out and you found out it's quite easy to do this sort of job even though you might have to do a little bit of heavy lifting and if you need any more help please visit the website at traderadiators.com. Thanks ever so much for watching and bye bye.